You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask a Drone You. My name is Pablo. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. <Go with> it. <laughs> Every now and then it is, anyway. Yeah, you know. And I'm Rob, and this is episode number eight hundred and forty-three. As always, we're thankful that you're hanging out with us. Hope you're having a great day. Hope you're getting a lot of flying in. Hope you're having good weather. All those good things. Maybe not in Phoenix, where it's a hundred and whatever it is. A whole, whole lot. And I don't know what you just saw, but. It's uh, it's it's actually kind of relevant to today's question. Okay, cool. This is an interesting question. This today. is. Uh, I'm just gonna warn everyone. Um, this show we talk about a question in regards to um, how do you how do you respond to clients when they say they have their own drone. Um, recently, this actually kind of this problem became evident here in Albuquerque too. As a local realtor, uh, Tanay was trying to find a drone pilot. And she had asked before, by the way, so this wasn't the first time. And there were people on, literally, on her feed discussing bypassing part 107. Hmm. And it drove me up the wall. It absolutely drove me up the wall. And... You know, finally, I like, you know, I was like, okay, guys, I just looked up every person that you guys are recommending on this feed for drone pilots, and not a single one of them is licensed. And <laughs> they um, don't care. And no, they don't. So this is good news, though, because guess what? There's a new FOIA request, thanks to our buddy Judd. And we now know that there are even more, even more enforcements. And one of them is actually against a realtor. So you little pansy realtors want to hire <laughs> illegal drone pilots, you're going to want to listen up, all right? Sorry, That's I right. hate realtors. I hate anyone who's just a sketchy mofo. Because let's be honest, Okay, Rob. but you, you, no, 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 you no, no, kill no. me when you use those generalities. Let's <laughs> just be kill honest. Me. When you cut corners in life... Which everybody you, does. Should you expect success? Of course not. Certainly Thank not to you. the extent that you could have success. All right, points over. Podcast done. <laughs> points over. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Play the question. <laughs> he doesn't hate realtors. There might be a couple of them. There's or actually, a few of them. I actually, okay, so PT3, I love him. Yeah. Okay, he's a realtor. He's the only realtor I work for. Craig, good guy. Everyone else, meh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot. Your wife's a realtor. I like Jana too, okay? <laughs> she has her license, but I wouldn't call her a realtor. All right. But anyways, before we get into the question... By the way, even my landlord is a realtor, and uh, we were talking about this very subject last night, and he said most realtors in this town are sketchy as they get. Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm just I'm just <laughs> anti-overgeneralizing for I obvious reasons. I, I know, I know, I know you do. At least I think I know you do. Anyways, have you guys checked out Drone? They are a great app that are allowing... Drone businesses just like yours to put your business on autopilot so that you can get back to doing what you love to do, which is fly, get new customers, make sure your customers are taken care of. It's not just another drone pilot database. Clearly not. That's not what they're trying to do is recreate that wheel. But they're a business tool that makes client interaction easier. That's their goal. Make that interaction easier so the paperwork, some of those logistics with dealing with customers become systematized. A lot of it even automated so that you don't have to worry about that stuff. And again, you can get back to doing what you love. So check them out. I think you might like their app. I think you will like their app. Schedudrone.com. That's S-C-H-E-D-U-D-R-O-N-E.com. And if you use the promo code DRONEU, all lowercase, you're going to get 25% off of your subscription to Schedudrone for the life of your subscription. So that's pretty cool. And they do have a trial period of, a, uh, I think it's 15 days. So you can try them out before you even do that. Giving you all kinds of options to see if you like them. Sometimes when you're prospecting for new customers, you're told that they have their own drone. How do you explain part 107 without them feeling like you are threatening them? Good question. And certainly some diplomacy is in order here. (sighs) (laughs) 
<laughs> right? This world is isn't full dip- of PC and diplomacy, and it's ruining our lives. And well, I'm, that's not true. You're being a little dramatic. I am being dramatic. <laughs> On that's purpose? My, that's my job. Pur- I mean, well, <laughs> my job okay, is to be dramatic fine. on radio. Okay, fine. <laughs> be dramatic with a little diplomacy. No. <laughs> Should go up and slap that girl and say, Rick James! Just kidding. Don't do that. Don't do that. Anyways, um, I think you certainly don't want to shy away. Okay. I will say that. Okay, you don't want to shy away. And one of the things that I talked about a while ago that was in that book, How to Be a Rainmaker, about educating clients... I think it's so vital to educate clients to see quality and say, look, uh, do you want a photo that stands out amongst the rest or do you want a photo that's just like all the other photos? Some people may not care. If they don't care, you need to go to luxury clients, people who are willing to pay money for quality so that when you do educate them, they can see the quality. That being said, whenever someone like this realtor I just mentioned in the beginning of the show, um, like this realtor did... I was very, how do I say this? I was very diplomatic at first. In fact, I'm pretty sure I I wrote on there, you know, hey, guys, I looked up everyone that, you know, has been marked here and no one has an FAA license. And just so you guys understand, realtors can be fined up to $11,000 per battery per flight per house. Now, people are like, oh, well, that's not happening. Well, guess what? I got something to show you guys. As of July 2nd, thanks to Mr. Judd, I can't say his name right, and I should, Slivka, Judd Slivka, it's a pretty cool name. Anyway, the number of enforcements has grown. We have an updated FOIA request. We should probably just do a show completely on this. But there was one person in here, Gerald, who uh, flew a drone without a license in Class C airspace and was charged $9,700 for a fee. Wow. That was in January of last year. So it looks like more and more cases are coming to fruition, which is good. At first, we only saw two. Now there are five closed and a lot more pending. Um, So the FAA is finally getting um, their poop in a group, and they are coming after people. And frankly... I'm freaking excited about and that. And they've said that, right? I mean, they they've have made said it clear that, yes. that they're ramping up. They hired 15 new special agents, and we were going to have one of the guys on the podcast, but we decided against it um, just because they're not really new. So it's an older program being revamped, and it's more about compliance, not enforcement. So that being said, what do you do when you have one of these people who's like, oh, I've got my own drone? I think this is what you should say. Oh, you have your own drone. Isn't it just a blast to fly? Isn't it fantastic, the emotion to just go up there and you know, just experience the world from a new perspective? But what happens if you crash? What happens if you hit a house you were selling? What happens if you hit a person? Without an FAA license, you would be unable to claim any insurance whatsoever because you weren't following FAA guidelines by having a Part 107 license. Do you believe that you can risk your business, your household, your kid's future, and your future financially just because you want to fly without a license? It's $150 and 60 questions and will probably take you a week to study for. Is $150 worth the future of you, your wife, your family, and your surrounding family? Because being the son of a lawyer, I've watched multiple people's lives ruined because of small decisions like this. And I've watched my father and other people ruin people's lives because of things like this. Mm -hmm. Um, It was in transportation and trucking specifically, but not in drones. But negligence is huge. If you are not licensed, it's instantly you're not following FAA guidelines. No payout. So we want to take it further because I asked Vic a question this weekend and I said, you know what? Okay, let's say you don't have an FAA license, but your policy doesn't say um, that you have to follow FAA guidelines. Because I know of one policy and one carrier that does not have that in the policy. Of course, just interject briefly. I don't know how this plays into it. Most of the people that are flying commercially without a license, they probably don't take the time to get insurance either. Well, it'd be a waste of money because they'd never pay out. Well, I don't think they're thinking that deeply, but they're just not getting it, but whatever. Yeah. So they're really stupid. (laughs) Long story short, they're doubling (laughs) down on dumb. (laughs) Dumb and dumber. (laughs) Well, good job. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I don't... Uh, speaks anyway, for itself, I think. It, it does. <laughs> anyway, so I asked Vic, whose wife is a, uh, she, she's an insurance agent, and he said, okay, so what if 
the, it doesn't say in the policy that they have to follow FAA guidelines. And they're like, well, in fact, let me read exactly what he said. All insurance policies have an exclusion that will not cover incidents when doing something outside of the rules, drone stuff or not. Mm. And outside of the rules, meaning you're not licensed. Yep. Yeah. So instant red flag, your renter's insurance, homeowner's insurance, general liability insurance, aviation insurance, drone insurance, <laughs> cut. You're risking everything. And remember, you are personally liable. So understand that if someone doesn't have their license and they have their own drone, you have to figure out a way. First, start off with a compliment, okay? Always start off with a compliment. Good this idea. goes like back to the to never split the difference, right? Rob, you play realtor. You got a you got your own drone at home. Ready? Sweet. Okay, so let's start. Three, two, one. Fly like a beast. Hey, Rob. So uh, I heard that uh, you got some pr new properties that you're going to be selling, and uh, yep. I was hoping that you know maybe we could do some more work together. Well, you know, I just I saw people flying drones, Paul, and I, it just looked pretty easy, frankly. It does look easy, huh? Yeah, I thought, man, I can do that. I'm just going to get the drone up in the air and Have you been having take fun? a few pictures. Yeah, it's a blast. Isn't it like an emotional rush to, to have that blast? Yeah, I mean, it, it's cool. It's fun. I don't know about an emotional rush, but I like just taking my own pictures. It's easy. It's fast. It's cheap. I don't have to pay somebody to do it. Yeah, the perspective is amazing. Yeah. And the thing is, you know, that emotional rush, that that perspective, mm -hmm. the fact that you're getting this done simple and fast, it's really cool. But what if I were to tell you that by you doing that and not having an FAA license, mm -hmm. um, you're risking, I mean, your whole business. I mean, is that little drone worth the whole thing, worth the whole business? Well, if you put it that way, no. But there's nobody around. I'm pretty good with it. I'm, I'm not really worried well, about it. Well, there's nobody around until you hit something and someone calls 911 and the police show up. And then they say, sir, can I see your FAA license? And then that's when the feds show up. Yeah, I guess I'm willing to take that risk. So you're willing to take the risk to be put in handcuffs by the federal government. Then you're willing to risk your business. Hmm. Financially, you're willing to risk your financial future of your family. How many kids do you have? Twelve. 12 kids. Mm -hmm. Sounds like they're going to be hungry. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, under, I understand, Rob. Convenience is, is one of the, the main factors of capitalism today. Look at Amazon. Look at Prime. Look at all that. It's convenient and easy to buy a drone. It's also convenient and easy to completely ruin your business by not being certified, licensed, and insured. Yeah, that makes sense. So is it hard to take the test? It's not hard at all. Huh. In fact, I've got this great course online, three different ways you can take it. If you're a visual learner, we've got that. If you're a lecturer learner, we got that. If you just want to go straight into the questions, memorize them, get 90% on the quizzes and go take it thing, go take it. Mm. I'm telling you. What's the website? DroneU.education. Okay. Well, maybe I'll check it out. I think it's worth checking out. And you know what? You've been really nice. Do you think that you're actually going to get a license? I'm going to give it a shot. I hope you do, and I'd be willing to help you all along the way. I'm going to follow up with you in a couple of weeks, and hopefully you're making moves. Um, you know, I, I look forward to it. You know. Cool. But, okay, so stopping the conversation there. Here's what I say, too, and I am not afraid to do this. I say directly, and I said this on her post, I have zero problem with reporting every single person on this list. Zero problem. Because I know what the FAA is going to do. And they're going to do nothing. They're going to call the person. They're going to scare the shit out of them. Then the person goes, ah, okay, I'll comply. They comply. They get a license. It's over. Right? Hopefully. I mean, you're always going to have outliers. You're always going to have people. Yeah. I mean, you said, in the, you said in the last podcast, don't generalize. I, I don't want to generalize because the FAA has a very, it's like, it's like an algorithm. If you're nice to them and you're compliant, no problems. If you're a to them and you question them and you give them hell, they will go after you with the full f fury of the federal government. I've seen it. I've <laughs> it's happened to me <laughs> before part 107. <laughs> so. Well, I'm I'm looking at the FOIA request information here and there are actually others on there that are pretty significant fines. Mm -hmm. it, it's not just I mean you noted one of the larger ones but 2500 bucks, 3750, 7 grand. grand. Those are those are big numbers. Yep. Can you imagine if the FAA just served you with a civil order and you had a $7,000 fine because you thought it was more convenient to fly your drone from Best Buy? Because that's what you need to think about when you fly your drone from Best Buy without a license. Then yeah. you need to think about that little baby that got cut in the face this weekend because someone was flying their drone too close to a kid. That guy's screwed. 
That yeah. guy is ruined. He will never fly again. And for me, I don't want to risk the ability to never fly again because for me, flight is meditative. For me, it is healing. Yes, I love it and it's a job and it's a job that I will never leave. But it's also healing. It's also deeper than that for me. And that's why I have my license and that's why I'm going to renew my license. I'm not going to risk it. Yeah. There are certain risks to take in business and this isn't one of them. Yeah, so I guess in, in conclusion, what I would say to Michael is, because you've talked, given him a couple of different scenarios about how to handle it, is don't back down. I mean, it's okay to let people know that what they're doing is illegal. Um, be respectful, be direct, be helpful, um, give them information, educate them on, literally, I, I, most of them probably know they're flying illegal, but some of them probably don't. So, And again, and, and I'll say this too, if they are compliant and they are willing to work with you, let it be. If they give you any crap whatsoever and they fight you, call the FAA on the person right away. Just because, look, it's just not worth it for this industry. They are already going to regulate us even more. It's coming. I was at the meeting in March. It's freaking coming. And by the way, I wouldn't call the FAA in front of them because that's just confrontational. That's actually a really good idea. Actually, I don't think it is. I'm going to do that next I, time. No, you're not. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> Because it's just confrontational. But you got to understand, people are so sensitive in this society. I love it being like, oh, hey, uh, Gary from the FAA's investigation <laughs> department. Uh, oh, hey, this is Paul. <laughs> yes, I've got someone here who's non-compliant under part 107. I'm standing under them. His name is uh, Tanay S. I'm not going to say the last name. And they're talking not, about no, bypassing 107. Would you like to have a conversation with this person? We'll oh, let right. me let me get your phone number really quick. Hey, today, what's your phone number? <laughs> we'll be right over, Paul. <laughs> yeah, but just no, they won't be right over. <laughs> but it'll scare the shit out of the person so badly. I mean, I almost do it for a ruse. It's just it's just kind of fun for me. But well, yeah, you gotta enjoy it. I mean, look, none of us like this. You gotta find some sort of sick joy in it. So <laughs> I wouldn't agree that you got to. <laughs> I might disagree with that point, but. Uh, and, anyway, you know, it's a matter of respect and education, I guess, I, is how I, I have, would sum it up. Yeah, I have found out that compliment, label, label what they're doing, give them scenarios, showcase how easy it is to get the license, why it's not worth the risk. If they comply, fantastic. If they don't, call the FAA. It's that easy. It's just that easy. Yeah. Yeah. So sure. anyway, that's going to do it for us today. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. sure we're going to raise some hairs on some necks with this one. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> As is usually the case. As usual. Anyway, that's that is right. going to do it for us today. I think the FA is going to really enjoy this one. They're going to listen to this. I can just see Kevin and Earl and everyone just being like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. Ask Drone You.